As ever, we want to hear from you at home. Get involved using the hashtag transfer talk, especially Newcastle fans, because that's where we begin. More than two months after the takeover by a Saudi Arabia-backed consortium, the new owners embark on their first transfer window. So what does the next month have in store for Newcastle and the man back there, Eddie Howe? Well, Keith Downey is very much the man in the know and will be reporting for us throughout the month on their business and joins us live from St James's Park. Now, good morning to Keith. Great to see you. Those Newcastle fans will be watching now and no doubt filled with optimism that the owners will not just spend, <laughs> but spend big. However, Keith, it is vital, given where they are on the table, that they get this right, isn't it? Yeah, Tom, I'm expecting a, a very busy, a long month ahead as far as Newcastle United are concerned in this transfer window. It seems a very long time ago since the takeover was finally pushed through back on the 7th of October. Since then, the Newcastle United supporters have been desperately waiting for this first transfer window, as you say, under the new ownership in the hope that they can get the players in that will save them from relegation this season. But it is that R word, Tom, that is the issue for both Eddie Howe and for, for the new owners here at the club this January because what they will not want to do is spend big money in this transfer window and then have their team relegated to the championship next season and having players on uh, very big wages for the championship next season. So I think it's a really fine balancing act for Amanda Staveley and her team to ensure that they get the right people in uh, this month to give them every chance of staying up in the division but not give them a financial hurdle then next season should the worst happen and they were to be relegated to the championship. When you just look at the league table, Tom, at the moment, Newcastle are obviously two points from safety. They've played a game more than, than Watford, who are fourth bottom as well. So they will feel that they can claw up that ground, they can make up that ground if they do bring the right players in. But they're going to have to get to work quickly because it's a busy month uh, as well. We've obviously seen games called off um, throughout the Premier League. Newcastle have had their last two called off as well. But they've played a few more than many of the other teams. So they know they don't have that much time to work in. So very crucial days uh, in the early days under the, the new ownership at Newcastle United. They want to make sure that they get this one right. But as I say, they don't have a lot of time uh, to work in. So a real test for them coming up. Keith, it's Mark in the studio here. Um, I don't know a time when you've ever not been busy, to be honest, uh, particularly when you cover Newcastle. Talking about the manager, Eddie Howe, he's going to be working with a lot of new people at the club as they try and attract new players to Newcastle. Who will be making the big decisions uh, and what will be the, the main area of focus over the course of this January window? Yeah, Mark, I know obviously you, you've worked uh, alongside Eddie Howe when, when covering Bournemouth in the past. It was a, a different situation for him there because he was working underneath essentially a, a director of football. There isn't actually a director of football in place here at Newcastle United in the two and a half months since the takeover went through. We do know that the club uh, are in talks with uh, Dan Ashworth, the technical director uh, at Brighton, who of course has worked with the FA before and comes uh, very highly regarded. So there has been some initial discussions there after Brighton gave them permission to speak to him in, in December but they have yet to appoint anyone in that role so it's Eddie that it will cert essentially give the nod to which players do and which players don't arrive at the club so a very busy month for him as well it's not something that he'll just be leaving uh, to anyone else and Amanda Staveley and her husband Merdad Gadusi uh, will be at the forefront of that as well what they have done uh, Mark is they have employed uh, Nick Hammond formerly of uh, Celtic uh, and Reading he was a director of football at both those clubs he's here uh, to help out really to try and see transfers over the line essentially a transfer specialist so he's come in already around a week or so ago he's already been very busy behind the scenes a lot will fall on his shoulders this month before Newcastle bring that director of, of football in interestingly I think a lot of us expected a director of football to be brought in before now they've decided to do things differently so they've been very hard at hard work behind the scenes in the lead up to Christmas and now that the transfer window uh, is open you would expect things really are going to ramp up now because as I, as I said to Tom just a moment ago they want to get the players in as soon as possible to give them every single opportunity of staying in the division this season. And Keith what players will they be wanting to bring in? Kieran Trippier is a name that's been linked with the club what can you tell us about that is it close? 
Yeah, Jess, I think Kieran Trippier has been their, their number one target since they arrived. Remember, this is a player that Eddie Howe has had before uh, at Burnley, an England international with, I think, 35 caps for the club, uh, 35 caps for England, of course. Uh, he's he's been in great form for Atletico Madrid. He's been over there for for a couple of years now, but I think very keen to come back here to England uh, and play football. Newcastle very keen to bring him here. We brought the the news to you on uh, I think it was Saturday. Now I'm getting my days mixed up with it being the turn of the year, but we brought to the new uh, news to you on Saturday that Newcastle had lodged that uh, bid for Trippier. Um, Diego Simeone has spoken a couple of times since then. Just yesterday, after their match, uh, which they won 2-0 against Rayo Valcano, he said, um, nowadays when a player wants to leave, he cannot be retained. It's up to Kieran now. So that suggests that a deal essentially has been struck between the two clubs and Newcastle uh, have reached that asking price with Atletico Madrid for the player. Uh, having, to, having spoken to sources here at the club, it's my understanding that Newcastle hope to get this one concluded swiftly and it is a player we could see arriving here in the north northeast at some point this week and he would be the first signing of the new regime. So it would carry a lot of weight, that one, with the Newcastle United supporters as well and I suppose someone they would like to see at the club. As I say, an England international, of course, he was involved in the Euros in the summer. Uh, England, uh, Newcastle don't sign too many England internationals these days, so it could just be a sign of things to come if they were to bring someone with the pedigree of Kieran Trippi in in the, in the first few days of the very first transfer window. Now, Keith, there's no doubt about it, there'll be plenty of names banded about, and I'm sure your phone will be extremely busy throughout all of January with names being mentioned, but who could we see potentially joining the club other than Kieran Trippier? Okay, well, I think um, I started counting at one point after the takeover went through uh, at the start of October, and I think I got to about 127 different names that had been linked to the club uh, in the build-up to Christmas. And I think that is because any agent worth their salt right now will want to link their player to Newcastle. They know that Newcastle desperately need reinforcements and they know that they've got money to spend. So without doubt, there's going to be a lot of players linked to this club. Trippier was one from the start when Eddie Howe arrived that he wanted to bring in. I think he was probably already on the, the club's radar uh, at that moment as well. I think they probably need to bring in at least four new signings. As well as Trippier, I think they probably need a, another fullback. Whether they do manage to get that or not remains to be seen. Rem remember, Trippier can play on both sides. They, they need a centre-back without doubt as well they've conceded a lot of goals in the Premier League this season and they've really really struggled to, uh, to keep the door closed uh, at the back not keeping well, I think they've only kept one clean sheet so far this season so Sven Botman of Lille is another player um, that I really expect Newcastle to go strong for this window uh, he's got all the attributes of what they need he's a young player developing set to be an international player uh, as well and he could stay here if they get him for the next five or five or six years so I think Sven Botman the Dutch uh, player from Lille is a player that they're definitely interested in is one that we could see arrive here at some stage there's other defenders as well Joe Roden at Spurs who I think would be available on a loan deal, uh, providing the, the COVID situation at Spurs doesn't uh, get difficult. I think that's one they could be interested in. Uh, and Jason Denier, the former Sunderland defender, is a player that the club are in, uh, interested in as well. Interestingly as well, you've got to look at the injury situation here at Newcastle. They were looking for a striker anyway until Callum Wilson picked up that injury to his calf against Manchester United here at St James's Park last week, which looks like it might keep him out for a couple of months. So I think that now Eddie Howe's going to think we don't just need one striker, I probably need two as well to see him through the next couple of months. So there's a raft of forwards uh, that have been linked to the, the club as well. I think it is very early days in the window. I think we're going to be very uh, busy as the days tick down towards the, the end. But I think Newcastle at the moment concentrating on getting Kieran Trippi in. He is their number one target, as I can see. As I say, he can play a number of positions across the back four. Once they get him in, I think they'll then turn their attentions to potentially adding a, a centre-back and then at least a striker or two as well. But yeah, I'm expecting it to be very busy here uh, this month um, with the, the first month or the first transfer window under the new ownership being a very, very crucial period for this football club moving forward. Great stuff, Keith. Thank you. Yeah, it's hashtag transfer talk for Newcastle fans. JC says, finally, the Phoenix will rise from the flames. Talking about Newcastle there. And uh, Dave says, always hopeful, but until they're holding the shirt, history teaches Toon fans 
to stay calm. Right, well, I wonder if our next guest is staying calm. Lots to ponder for Newcastle fans. And this is Emil Franchi from the True Faith podcast. Good morning to you, uh, Emil. There is lots to talk about. You'll have been hearing what Keith Downey was saying there about potential deals. How optimistic are you about this window? Uh, well, it, it's nice for, for Keith to have something to talk about this early in January for once at Newcastle. Normally he's hanging around until the 31st and uh, uh, just hoping that maybe like a crisp packet rolls by, but, but this time, no, it's different. Um, you know, it's the 3rd of January. This was the day that the arbitration case was meant to be starting. It's a very different story now for Newcastle fans. We've got a bit of optimism. We've had some brilliant communication from the owners uh, just before uh, the new year even came in. So. You know, the owners are reassuring us that, that they've had plans in place for quite some time. And, and that is really all we wanted. We wanted to know that as soon as uh, the transfer window opened, we were going to be straight out the blocks and uh, and trying to get these deals done. And um, just from what Keith's saying there, it already sounds like things are ready. Um, the, the owners have seen the position we're in. Um, we've already got a solid base of unity amongst the team. So any new additions are hopefully going to allow us to, to claw back some of these points on the teams that are above us because not much has changed in the table uh, since Newcastle were, were hanging around in that bottom two for the first time this year. Emil, we'll be back to you in just a moment. Just stay where you are. But I want to go to you now, Mark, because Eddie Howe's a Newcastle manager and you know Eddie Howe very well. What's his spending been like at previous clubs? Yeah, I spent a number of uh, windows and years watching every move and moment uh, Eddie Howe made in the transfer window as he was Bournemouth manager, of course, in 2008, right through to when he was at Burnley and then back at Bournemouth, taking them from League One to the Premier League. So uh, I've spent very, <laughs> a lot of time talking to Eddie Howe about transfers and the types of players he wants to sign and the philosophies that he's adapting when signing players. Uh, and we've made up a little bit of a graphic here just to show you some of the things that he has done in the transfer windows. Let's start with some of the big hitting signings that made a huge impact for Eddie Howe at Bournemouth. You can see on the left-hand side there, Callum Wilson, who joined the club uh, in July 2014 for just £3 million. He went on to get 23 goals in that championship season that fired Bournemouth to the Premier League. He scored 67 goals in 187 games. And most crucially for Bournemouth, they sold him for £20 million, making £17 million profit. Onwards there, Matt Ritchie, another player that was absolutely top class for Bournemouth. They paid just £400,000 for him from Swindon. They then sold him to Newcastle, funnily enough, for £12 million. In the middle, Aaron Ramsdale. This is probably one of the, the standout signings. A player that was playing for Sheffield United Reserves, essentially. Barely played a first-team game when Bournemouth paid just a million pounds for him. They went on to sell him for £18.5 million back to Sheffield United. Uh, fourth along that list, Nathan Aki from Chelsea, paid £20 million for him, sold him for £41 million. He went on to win the Premier League with Manchester City. And then finally, Joshua King, cost just £2 million, scored 48 Premier League goals in his 145 Premier League appearances for Bournemouth, a player that definitely had a big impact. These are some of the players that are picked out that perhaps didn't quite work out as well as what Eddie Howe would have liked. Takelo Ranti there, cost £2.4 million, scored just five league goals in three years. Juan Aturbe, a player he signed in January uh, 2016, just two Premier League appearances for Juan. Uh, Maxi Gradle, £9 million they spent on him, 25 appearances in three years before selling him to Toulouse for £6 million, just a one goal in that second spell. Diego Rico there, fourth on that list, £11 million, didn't really have the impact down on the south coast that they were expecting. Uh, and Lee Tomlin, uh, £3.5 million in August 2015. And then look at these players, the ones he signed for Burnley. Charlie Austin, 41 goals in 69 starts in the league. Ben Mee, who went on to become the captain and make over 300 appearances for Burnley. Kieran Trippier, who could be going to Newcastle. It cost just £400,000 for Manchester City. What a signing that was, who ended up becoming a Tottenham regular, an England international, and of course uh, over at Atletico Madrid, where he won La Liga. Danny Ings, we all know about his goal-scoring exploits at uh, Burnley. 38 goals in 99 starts. And then junior Stanislas, a player he went on to sign at Bournemouth again. I think the, the key thing to look at that, 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 those lists, first of all, there are a lot of players you could have picked that could have gone into either section as being really good signings or things that didn't work out quite so well. But I think quite interestingly, all of the players that were a big success for Eddie Howe at Bournemouth and Burnley were UK domestic signings. They came from within the country. The players that he signed from abroad didn't work out quite so well. So that might be an interesting dynamic as to the way Eddie Howe approaches 
this January transfer window. Yeah, it's quite easy to forget those Burnley transfers as well because he wasn't there for that long, but they were very impressive. So, Emil, you've just been watching that and listening to that from Mark. Does that fill you with quite a lot of confidence that he can get it right this month? Totally. I mean, it's weird. When when Howe was first uh, mentioned for Newcastle United, one of, one of the biggest things that people were saying could be a setback was his transfer record, uh, looking at some of the failures at Bournemouth. I mean, you just have to look at Newcastle's transfer history. You probably wouldn't be able to fit all of the players onto your screen, uh, just to, to name a few, the likes of Matt Sells and Cisco and everything else that came during the Mike Ashley era. Um, you'd be here for hours talking about failed transfers. But um, hearing from Bournemouth fans, about maybe players even like Dominic Solanke, he's suddenly uh, banging him in, in in the championship now. So, you know, um, he, he's got a good legacy, I would say, but um, we'll judge on how he spends for us eventually. Uh, certainly won't be in, in this season, I don't think, or at least we'll wait until we get until the end of the year. Um, there's no doubt that the owners will be doing exactly the same, but fans are very much behind how at the minute we've bought into the, the, the philosophy that he's brought to the team. You only have to see uh, what he's done with the likes of uh, Joe Linton already uh, to, to see uh, that things are being implemented that, that just haven't been there for the last two years, certainly at Newcastle United. So, um, yeah, I mean, let, let's just see what happens. I, I'm very excited and I think that that excitement at the moment is what's going to hopefully carry the, the whole club forward, fans, owners, manager alike. Feels like it's very positive, Emil, then. So when you've been talking to your friends on the podcast, all Newcastle fans, what areas do they want to see strengthened? Which, uh, what Keith said, basically, the, the defence it is highly unreliable. We've had some crucial games this year, uh, the Norwich one in particular, which, which started with a disaster with Kieran Clark getting set off. And uh, quite rightly, Newcastle fans were furious at uh, such a, a lapse of concentration. And, and this is the thing. Our team is full of players who came from the Championship and are still uh, getting a run out in the Premier League. I've not, not got anything against these players, but... You just It just goes to show how much we've been lacking any sort of quality in this team or improvement uh, for so long in, in certain areas. Um, Lascelles was there in the Championship. Clark, who I've mentioned, was there in the Championship. Uh, you've got Federico Fernandez getting very old, but also is, is, is injured at the minute. Uh, same as Jamal Lewis, who showed great promise when he came back into the squad. We can't really catch a break at the back at the moment. So um, defence, it, it needs plugging. Uh, just so uh, Martin Dubravka isn't as exposed at the back. And yeah, again, the Callum Wilson situation is obviously a bit of a shadow over things at the moment after that brilliant performance against Manchester. United um, so we need goals we need to stop goals I know that's pretty much what every football team needs but Newcastle need it desperately when you look at their position in the league and the the lack of wins yeah I think it's going to be busy for Newcastle fans and exciting as well Emil thank you cheers thanks very much guys